I'm making a quick video today to recap on my previous videos that I've made in the past and some new improvements that I found over time to make this process a bit easier and have better results than before. First thing we need to do for both of these methods is to prep our clip and I'm going to drag in a clip here and what we have to do is delete the dead frames. So how do we do that? First, we have to cut out all of the frames that have a piece of movement. As you can see here, no movement, movement. We have movement here, movement there. And you just have to do this for the whole clip. All right, and now that you're done, you will see all of your splits have been made. The key binds for this are Control B on default to split the clip and right on the arrow key to go one frame at a time. So once you do that, you'll have your clips looking something like this. So what do we do now? Make sure to select your clip, click on this button for the trim edit mode, hit Control and D on your keyboard and you will get the change clip duration pop-up. Make sure to change it from time to frames and select the duration and type in one and click change. This will automatically remove all the dead frames for you as you can see here. Make sure not to miss any or else it will mess up and give you warping in your Twixter. And now after we're done, I'm going to extend this clip so then we can time remap it. As you can see here, I have a marker all the way over here and I wanna extend it all the way to the marker. What I'm gonna do is add a solid color. Once I add the solid color, I'm gonna split it and then delete the excess of the clip. And after that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you know your frame number. So how you can do that is counting one by one. So I have 15 frames to work with here. And then the rest of this is the black frame that I'm using as an extension. So you'll want to select everything, press C on your keyboard for compound clip and click create. Then right click and go into the fusion page. Once we're in the fusion page, we're gonna to wanna to add two nodes, an optical flow node and a time stretcher node. On the time stretcher node, Make sure you have no keyframe set randomly in the middle of your clip. Make sure there is only one at the start and you add one at the very end. And now go to your time stretcher and change it from blend to flow, clamp edges. And then I like to check these two options down here. Once you do that, you want to go to your last keyframe and add the frame number that you counted before on the edit page right here. You can also use a number less than that if you want the clip to end earlier, but that is totally up to you. For me, I'm going to use 15 because that is what I counted in the edit page. Now open your spline editor and simply make a graph. I'm going to use a sharp graph just like this and once you're done go back to the edit page let it cache and then i will show you the result and as you can see here now that the cache is done if i play the clip twixer is perfect and i don't see any warping that i need to change but sometimes this might not always work and i will show a few examples of scenarios that cause this and what to do when they happen so here i have a clip where the hair is moving very quickly as you can see and a lot of the time you will get warping with these kind of clips if you do the regular method as you can see here i've extended the clip all the way to two seconds right here and this is the result that i got as you can see, it's not bad, but there is quite a bit of warping on the hair edges right here. So what would we do to fix that? We would use a program called Flow Frames, as you can see here. I'm going to be using the paid version for this video, but it will also work with the free version. The only difference with the paid version is that you can interpolate to any number you want instead of the maximum 10 on the free version, but that should still be good enough to get you the result that you're looking for. First, what you'll need to do is export all of these dead frames as their own clip. Go to the last frame right here and click O on your keyboard to make a render range. Go to the render page and export it out to any folder that you have your media on. Then after you do that, simply open up flow frames and import your clip. Change the FPS by times 10. As you can see here, mine would go to 180 frames, but personally, I like to change mine to 900 frames if I can. But if you don't have the paid version, the 10 should be more than enough for you. And now you should have a flow frame file. Once you do that, you can simply get rid of all of these and then add in a fusion comp into your timeline. Make it go to wherever you want. Once again, I'm going to go to the marker at two seconds right here. Split it, delete the excess. And now we have our fusion comp. So go into the fusion page and then drag in your flow frame video here, connect it up. And as you can see on the original media at the top right, it says I have a thousand and one frames right here. So this is the number I will type into my time stretcher the same way as before. So I will add a optical flow, a time stretcher, and then once again, change it to flow clamp edges, change the two boxes there, go to the end and then type in the number that I mentioned. It will be different for your clip, but for me, it is a thousand and one frames. Now I will go and open the spline editor and make a sharp graph, go back to the edit page, let it cache. And on screen now, I'm gonna show a comparison between the both of them. And you can see the individual warping of the hairs on both of the clips that are the exact same length and the exact amount of time stretched. The only difference is simply one is without flow frames and one is with. As the two examples show, you don't always need to use flow frames only when it is a situation like this, where you cannot get it to work with the original time remapping method. And there you guys have it. I hope this updated 
recap video helped you guys out. I use these two methods on all my edits and the Twixer comes out great. So if you want a Twixer just like me, this is how I do it. If you're looking for more information about both of these methods, I will link two videos that I've made in the past in the description below. If you guys enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It would help me out a ton. And go check out my channel if you want to see any more tutorials that might inspire you or help you with any other problems you've had. So anyways, guys, I will see you guys next time.